We'll move on now to the U.S. where stock index futures posted solid gains ahead of Tuesday's open, boosted by optimistic news coming out of China. Now, around 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Dow futures soared 276 points, indicating a rise of 339.90 points at the open. The Nasdaq and the S&P 500 futures also indicated a positive start to Tuesday's session for their respective markets. And concerns over a potential trade war between the U.S. and China have been alleviated somewhat after Chinese President Xi Jinping discussed um, plans on Tuesday to further open up the country's economy with measures including lowering import tariffs on autos and forcing legal intellectual property of foreign groups and reducing duties on other consumer products. On the data front, the NFIB Small Business Optimism Index is due out at 6 a.m. Eastern Time, followed by Producer Price Index data at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time and Wholesale Trade at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. In Asia, markets closed higher today as stocks got a boost from Chinese President Xi Jinping's comments on measures planned to further open up the Chinese economy. Stocks in the region climbed and the dollar strengthened against the yen on the back of those remarks. In Japan, the Nikkei 225 tacked on 0.54% to close at 21,794.32 off an intraday high of 21,933.99 points hit earlier. South Korea's Kospi index, meanwhile, erased earlier losses to close higher by 0.27% at 2,450.74, despite the move lower in major technology names. Elsewhere, China markets were in positive territory. Hong Kong's Hansen Index bounced 1.82% after its tentative open in the morning. On the mainland, the Shanghai Composite gained 1.67% and the Shenzhen Composite rose 0.51%. In Australia, the S&P ASS 200 advanced 0.83% as the energy, materials and financial sub-indices all recorded gains of more than 1%. And back here in Africa, Lafarge Wholesome Limited sees improving profit margins at its Africa units this year as Nigerian and South African economies pick up and as the company invests the proceeds of 131 billion naira rights issues. The earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization margin will rise above 35%. The company's chief executive officer, Michael Pochkos, says the company is working to reduce energy and transportation costs as part of a turnaround plan. Lafarge Olsen, the Jonah, Switzerland-based market leader in cement, is expanding in Africa to take advantage of economic growth and a boom in infrastructure projects across the continent. The company sees demand for cement improving in Nigeria along with the economy, while in South Africa it's focusing on cost controls. As a result of the right issues, Lafarge also increased its stake in Lafarge Africa to 76% from 71%. And investors threatened that Zambia may have more debt than it's let on have sent the nation's euro bonds tumbling. Our yields on the copper producing countries, $1.25 billion amortizing bonds due in 2027 rose as much as 54 basis points Monday, and the most since February 2016, before powering the increase to 50 basis points at 8.45%. The yield was the highest in more than a year. Our banks, including Nomura Holding Incorporated, say the government may have greater external liabilities than it's made public. That's bad news for holders of Zambia's dollar securities, which were already the worst performers in Africa year to date through the end of last year, losing 2.4%. The risk is that Zambian bondholders could find themselves in a similar situation as investors in Mozambique, where hidden debts led to default and the government is seeking to restructure. And Standard Bank Group Limited is seeking a banking license in Senegal after opening in Ivory Coast as the lender expands in West Africa's French-speaking countries. Africa's largest lender, which opened in the world's biggest cocoa producer on Monday, will focus on corporate and investment banking clients after obtaining the license in 2016. 
Standard Bank sees Ivory Coast as an entry point for Francophone West Africa and will target to have all the necessary permits for Senegal in 12 to 18 months. The economy of Ivory Coast, the biggest among the eight countries of the West African Economic and Monetary Union, expanded at 7.8% last year, after an average of 9% per year since 2012, boosted by public spending. After growth of 6.8% in 2017, Senegal will maintain an expansion rate of about 7% until 2002, 2022, according to the International Monetary Fund. Our other countries in the bloc include Bene, Burkina Faso, Guinea-Bissau, Mali, Niger, and Togo. Lipster Holdings Property Limited, a South African consumer goods company, plans to raise 1.5 billion rand to repay a portion of its debt and expand its capacity by selling shares on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. The offering, which will only be made available to private investors, is targeting a free float of at least 40%. Lipstar is the third company in the past two weeks to state its intention to float in Johannesburg, highlighting a more positive mood among investors following newly elected President Cyril Ramaphosa's promises to kickstart the economy. Lipster's 27 business units offer consumer products that include specialized foods such as gluten-free baked products to retailers, including Woolworths. More details of the offering, including the number of shares and issue price, will be released with a pre-listed statement at a later stage.